So what we did, <laughs> moving smartly along, um, was we started. To, we thought, well, let's go out and find out what people think uh, of the way that pricing has gone. What have, what have business leaders done? Let's not just hypothesize ourselves. Because one of the things that we were seeing, and I'm personally seeing, and my colleagues were seeing on the ground, were pricing structures uh, that we felt were unsustainable. Um, pricing approaches, pricing strategies, pricing execution policies, and, uh, and investment in, in things like discounting and promotion for new product development. What I'll play back to you today is some of the statistics that we have gathered recently in the marketplace from uh, a cross-section um, of uh, UK businesses. We picked the, the top 500. Uh, we selected uh, 200 of those businesses, and we anonymously uh, surveyed uh, and interviewed um, a set of senior executives from each of those uh, businesses. The anonymous part is important because we wanted them to answer honestly about the current state of pricing uh, within, their, uh, within their firms. Um, this is big stuff. I mean, if you were to take a probably uh, very broad brush approach, if you think of the impact of getting pricing correct or pricing back to what a number of these business leaders consider to be sustainable levels, this is many billions of pounds of profit uh, annually for, uh, across the top 500 uh, firms in the UK. Profit that is currently not flowing through to the bottom line of those businesses, a number of which are suffering uh, as a result of that. We, had, we could kind of distill uh, uh, about four key things, which I, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through some of the statistics that came through. But if we kept some themes to these, one would be race to the bottom. Second would be uh, the impact and uh, effect of what we call unsustainable pricing. The wrong customers and future strategies. And I'll say a bit more about those la last two um, and their implications, because I think that will be right on the agenda of most of the people uh, in, in this uh, auditorium today. The race to the bottom um, could be described as the bleeding obvious here, that during uh, a very difficult economic period and, and, and a set of very turbulent markets, lots of businesses and lots of individuals and lots of leaders did lots of things very, very quickly. They cut a lot of prices very quickly. They cut a lot of costs in their business, they restructured, they changed strategies very, very fast. One of the things that happened to pricing was discounting became a major lever to try and sustain some form of customer uh, and consumer confidence, uh, to keep revenue lines up, to keep business flowing. This was not done uh, typically in a structured, well thought out, aligned to our long-term strategy way. This was done in a survival mode. Um, and that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, but it is a major factor that's flowing through uh, today. And a lot of uh, our clients and the people that we talk to would recognize that this has happened over the last number of years um, through the very, very difficult times that we've come through. It does, however, give us a particularly challenging place to start as we think about uh, the next uh, couple of years, uh, this year coming and the next two or three years uh, in the markets around us. Um, and so a sample of the statistics, and, and we have a report which contains the, the, the output of all our analysis, which we, uh, we will circulate and I think is uh, is circulated for you to, to have a look at. But uh, again, I said nothing, nothing terribly surprising. Uh, most people would recognize some aspects of this uh, to a greater or lesser extent in the businesses they have been in. Uh, what's more interesting is sort of the, the, what's the impact of this? Well, a lot of people recognize that the pricing structures that they now have in their businesses are unsustainable, that they did those things for very good survival type reasons, but they don't really align to the cost structures, the operating models, or the long-term strategies of those businesses, either long-term and just straight profitability. We wanted to sell product X at profitability Y because that was the intention and that was relative to the investment we were putting into it, um, or we're not generating enough profit to pile back into new product innovation, uh, brand building, expansion, uh, new areas, and, and customer development. Uh, we're also in an environment where a lot of our input costs are going up, and there's a lot of cost and pricing pressures outside us. The actual amount of money that our consumers have in their wallets is going down. The costs of fuel and materials are going up. Uh, and the ability to increase or move prices is very difficult. And we have lowered prices substantially. When everybody lowers the prices in the marketplace, that devalues the entire market value. It's very difficult to move back off that. It's all, you, you, you still see plenty of evidence of, of places where people are looking at, and I see this all the time, they look at a discount level that's being habitually applied, uh, applied across a range of products or to a sector or to a number of uh, particular type of consumers that they have or customers, and they say, well, that's a discount and we can always take that away. And the reality of it is, no, you can't. 
If everybody's done it, that has become the new price. The fact that theoretically, two or three years ago, you used to charge more for that is history. A lot of people find it very difficult to move off price points that they have established, especially if everybody else has established those price points around you, and that's a very difficult thing. The other thing that's happening with unsustainable pricing, and a, and a client of mine uh, recently put this in a, in a very good way. He said, we're, we're at the moment driving by looking in the rear view mirror. A lot of businesses don't fully appreciate the flow through impact of the pricing structures that are in place at the moment. So we're seeing the impact of that coming through at the bottom line, and sometimes it's coming through as a rather unpleasant surprise. Uh, in a way that sounds like the business is out of control, it's not, but businesses aren't geared up to deal with changes in pricing structures uh, that have happened as quickly as they have happened now, and where they've moved off uh, potentially what was the historic understanding or structure or strategy of that firm. And so we are seeing, and we're seeing it in the high street and we're seeing it across a number of sectors now, um, profit warnings coming out or some businesses coming out and saying, well, we thought we were going to do rather well this year, but actually we've done actually quite a lot worse than we thought. Uh, and one of the elements of that, there are a number of factors, right? And one of the elements is we've had to employ different pricing strategies or we are employing pricing strategies which are having unexpected results for us. And we're finding it difficult to move away from those. Now, that's a sort of a sense of what's coming through about where we're at. Two of the forward-looking implications, which I think are, are relevant uh, to, the, to, the, to the talks and discussion that are, that are going to come after me, are what, one, what we call the wrong customers, and the second one around <coughs> what we think the implications are for future strategy. So the, the wrong customers, this is, this is a tricky one. We, we think that it's a tricky one to prove Absolutely, but a lot of the belief coming through is that the customer bases have fundamentally changed. You either have physically the same customers, but their buying power, their expectations, what they're willing to pay and what they're willing to do has moved, or in fact you actually have a completely different set of customers. And because this has happened quite quickly and in a very dramatic way across a number of aspects of the marketplace, it's quite difficult to predict what these customers are going to do. So if you're in a retail environment, do you have a different set of people now walking in? We talked about the uh, non-loyal customers, the effects of price discounting. Who are you selling to? Because a lot of the future strategies of w on which a lot of investment in uh, products and customer services are being based are making assumptions about what these customers are going to do over the next two years. We'll sell service or product X at the following level because we believe we can migrate people to something else. That obviously relies on the fact that you understand that customer base very well, and I think our, the data we're seeing at the moment and the experience we're having in the marketplace at the moment right now is that understanding is not fully there and because people have moved around a lot and the pricing aspect of the market is moving customers around en masse, as well as all of the other economic factors like people being worse off, people being worried about what the future brings. I think we are looking at uh, very difficult times coming ahead and we need to be very, very cognizant of that. Uh, we were talking before uh, we kicked off this morning about indicators in the marketplace, a very worrying indicator, I would suggest, about the future uh, health for the consumer in the marketplace right now is alongside all of these things that we're hearing about, people being worse off uh, month on month, year on year. If you look at the rise of the pawnbroking business, that will give you a very scary barometer uh, of what's happening to consumers on the ground. And in fact, in almost a deep irony, a very, very high-class pawnbroking business has opened up uh, just in the last couple of weeks opposite Goldman Sachs on Fleet Street. <laughs> it's filled with Rolex watches and Omega watches and all of that. So, uh, and I didn't believe that when someone told me, and then I walked by and I saw it, and I thought, wow, that is an interesting thing. So the, the wrong customers, we think, a big impact because forward-looking strategies and service uh, plans in a lot of the clients that we're seeing, a lot of people who respond to this survey are hinged off certain assumptions which may no longer be true. And so when we look at future strategies, we think about, well, a number of the obvious things come back. What do people want to do? They want to, if they're in maybe service-based uh, uh, industries, we want to be thinking about variable pricing, pay as you go. It's a good way of getting people to, to buy into our services and product, maybe differentiate um, uh, with customers, get them to pay more for certain bits of this, and certainly come back to premium pricing. Now, in both of these things, we see a sort of one side well, everybody wants to do this, but actually a significant portion of people think this is going to be very difficult to do. And what I would actually say is that when we talk about premium pricing, for a lot of the businesses that I see, premium actually translates to just 
normal or quite good as opposed to extra profitable. Let's just get back to a correct level of profitability in the product lines that we are, are doing so that we've got a sustainable level of profit to show to our stakeholders and enough money to recycle into either uh, new customers or new products. And we're seeing and hearing in the marketplace that this is going to be a very, very difficult thing to deliver. Now, um, I guess our key recommendations are a bit of potentially mom's apple pie uh, on this pricing strategy uh, and thinking about alternatives to price and the whole way that we're going out into the marketplace should be on the boardroom agenda. Aligning pricing to the overall business strategy, critically important in understanding the new market dynamics. Aligning this to getting the right information and getting consistent execution is absolutely critical. And I suspect what a number of people will recognize is the disconnect between those first two and the second two. So a lot of businesses will talk at a strategic level about what we want to do. We'll have a budget setting process. I was in a boardroom uh, only yesterday where a client was saying, well, we're going to set our budgets and we're going to look at our revenue and a number of customers that we're going to serve and the volume and, and all of that. And that's terrific. And we do that at the start of the year. But we all know that what happens is during the year, things change and we kind of keep an eye on the revenue line and sort of the volume, but we change the product mix. We put some discounting in there. We stimulate a bit of growth, all of that sort of stuff. And, uh, and we do that, and we're going to probably have to do an awful lot of that this year because it's going to be a pretty tough year. The problem for this particular business, and this is not that unusual, is some of those measures, while they are potentially stimulating or defending a revenue or volume position, are actually profit destroying because that profit mix is moving very, very dramatically. It's not aligned to a true understanding of the cost to serve or the cost of the products or goods that are being sold. Um, and that's not because people are being reckless. It's simply because, in a number of instances, the information simply isn't there to make the correct decision making. And, and being very thoughtful about that is critically important. Um, and consistent execution. If we start the year uh, or we have plans that are geared off a certain understanding of the economics of what we're going to do, we've got to be very careful that we stick to that. And indeed, if you look at what happens if you put too much pressure on, uh, I think it was mentioned in, in the introduction, put too much pressure on sales forces, uh, and they're basically being measured off uh, maybe the more straightforward things to measure, like just straight volume and revenue. Well, as Adam Smith would say in his economic theory, people do what they're incentivized to do. They start discounting to keep uh, revenue volumes up because it's an easy lever to pull. They don't think about alternatives to that, and that can be a very, very bad result uh, for business all around, both in terms of a long-term sustainable position and doing some of those correcting measures that we talked about, lowering price expectations um, among the market base. One of the things that we suggest, and this is in the, in the back of, a, I think, a, our report, which is available to us, is just, we, we suggested 10 questions that you could ask internally in teams or in decision-making just to stimulate the debate, because it, it's worth thinking about all the different aspects of your strategy. You know, are we thinking about these things in the right way? Do we have the right information? Is strategy being debated correctly at board level? And is that flowing down into policy and execution? If we are thinking about alternatives to price, topic of today, who's making that decision? How well sponsored is that going to be from a leadership level down into execution, or indeed from strategy to policy to execution throughout our, uh, throughout our business? I would suggest those are ways that are extremely important to longer term profitability. These are things that are not always executed as well as they ought to be in businesses and increasingly they're becoming very, very important. So to, to wrap up a, a, what might seem like a little bit of a grim scene set about uh, where things are, uh, complacency coupled with uh, downturn discounting, not a good place to be. And escaping this predicament uh, is not going to be easy at all. I think the uh, increased understanding in the market, our customers, where we're at now, Increasing the information we have and how we think about those marketplaces, what we're doing to stimulate uh, customer demand, uh, and if we are replacing pricing uh, or thinking about alternatives to that to generate uh, different types of demand, are we able to measure that in a way that allows us to react to it, to adapt to it, and to understand its long-term positioning? I think very, very important, and uh, we'll see a key link to the discussion we're having today.